Here we have an Elmo TRV-16G. Uh, we're going to replace the magnetic roller. Uh, the TRV-16G, uh, TRV-16H, and the Transvideo are all the same as far as the um, uh, replacement is concerned. Also the um, Elmo um, CLs that have magnetic or optical. Uh, one of them is the ETC, which is their Telecine version. Uh, and I assume there's probably some uh, um, regular CLs out there with that option of magnetic sound. Uh, it would be the same on those units. Uh, if you have an AL, uh, an Elmo AL auto load, uh, it would be um, relatively the same, but the uh, uh, loading mechanism is different, and uh, this should at least uh, give you some guidance in, in doing it on an AL. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, remove the cover. Uh, the roller for the um, uh, for the uh, magnetic sound is here. I'm going to zoom in to show you where it's at. It's located here. Um, what you have is a, and I'll just put that a little bit so you can see that, you have a, a knob here for magnetic and optical. Um, when you go to magnetic and then forward, uh, this is actually supposed to come up. This is one of the things on most of them that if you haven't used it a while, see how stiff that is. That comes up this way and then basically puts pressure on the uh, magnetic sound head. So this will have to be lubricated. And we have to make sure that this is free when going from magnetic to optical. Uh, yeah, well, it's actually pretty frozen so we'll address that as we're going along. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, remove all the covers. I'll zoom this back just a tad. I'm going to want to remove uh, this one has covers separate here. Magnetic sound working, you can use scope tones, uh, news footage. Um, sometimes this uh, plate comes off with this, you have to take these two screws off, but in this one you do not. Uh, this is pretty stiff. Boy. Okay. So at this point, um, this is where we're going to start. We're going to take off the uh, loading knob and this cover too, because that will be in a way we'll work things around. There's a screw, rather an Allen, underneath here, which is metric. I think it's a 2.5, but you know, just pull your set. And uh, so the knob comes off that way. You can see there's There, there is a screw on the bottom here. And there's a screw on the top. So now we have all the covers are off. Start is 
is um, moving this, and we're still going to be removing, uh, when I think of it, we've got to take the power knobs off in this too, because we're going to be loosening up some of this loading mechanism. By the way, you always want to put back on the knob, because you don't have to put it on tight, but you're going to be going back and forth a little bit. D light, so I usually just leave it connected, move it out of the way. Okay. See, and be careful with the wire, you don't want to mess up the wire, you know. about it is this roller has a shroud on it. Uh, let's see. You can see it has a shroud, so the shroud is going to have to be realigned to make sure it doesn't touch the film when we put it together. Take a notice for where it's at. This wide, this opening is sort of like toward the bottom of the, of the, I'll call it holder here, okay? The first thing we're going to do is remove the You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera closer, I'm going to shut it off and bring it closer to try to give an upward viewpoint here, a uh, downward viewpoint for you. So uh, hang loose. Okay, that's a little better. So we're going to remove the sure how much blockage I'm going to have while I'm working here, but we're going to remove this large clip. Yep, okay, that was good. By the way, that's why I have these. If you don't have one, we have them on our website. But it's ma almost mandatory when you're using uh, these little parts and so on, one of these magnetic tools. Okay, so... Um, You can see the shaft is really not free flowing like it should be. Uh, let me see if I can get a. But what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to. You know, I'm going to start to drop some oil on that shaft now. Because you may run into the same thing. I use synthetic oil. It acts as a um, it acts as a penetrant. It's got a detergent in it. We're gonna have to get this sh shaft up and loose. So at this point. Okay, you can see we're almost getting it. Now I put, oh, by the way, what I did was, 
as you're going to be doing this also, is just move your knob back and forth on occasion. You want to get the easiest way to get this thing out. So uh, at this point, right now, I have it in forward, okay? So... Uh, What I'm trying to do, and I think what I'm going to do is take this off to less things in the way, the better off you are. And again, you move the knob back and forth so you have best access to things. out of the way and yeah, it's better see we're able to move this up and down now just a little bit okay. you could see some movement up and down see what I do is I work that oil in there can you take all this apart and remove the shaft, sure, but uh, it's really not necessary if you, uh, and by the way, you should have these oilers too. You can get in little spots with them. We also have those on the website. Okay, but, you know, at this point, just moving the shaft up and down helps work the oil in. What you want to do is put it in forward back and forth a bit yeah see it's already starting to loosen up that's what's great about pen, uh, the, the synthetic oil it uh, with the detergent in there it's sort of you don't have to worry about a messy uh, let's call it uh, WD-40 or anything like that uh, now the next step is is to remove this nut because this is the roller we're going to want to take off and don't forget that you're going to want to realign this uh, uh, shroud so that when the film when the roller goes up it does not touch the film path uh, you'll notice that there's an extremely small screw here if the shroud ever gets loose you have to actually tighten that onto the shroud but it's already sticking out so more than likely we won't have to mess with it. And of course I got the wrong size, so let me get another one. Okay, another pause on the video while I find the right size. Well, we just found the right size for the nut here. And we're going to remove the nut and as you see the whole thing comes loose here I'm not going to drop it this time there so we got the nut off now here's the part that's always tricky is what the manual tells you is to remove let me just back it up the manual tells you to remove all this this bottom area but then, you know, it's, there's a good chance, especially if you don't do it a lot, that you're going to have something off when you put it back together. I prefer just to loosen it. Because what happens is, you can't get 
you can't get this roller out it's simply no room to flip it under okay so at this point next step I'm going to get a closer view here okay next step oh, I guess I got to show the full viewpoint here okay is usually if you just loosen these two screw, uh, nuts and one screw in here it's a Phillips and you can usually lift up the mechanism to get this out so let's give it a shot uh, the Phillips is here and to access the Phillips you have to have it in forward okay rotate that so but just loosen it because it's a part of the slider system I guess I could show you that screw without too much trouble I hope the Phillips is right there I'm going to leave that buried now for the rest of the demonstration. And then what we're going to do is remove, loosen these two screws here. Now this is uh, one of the things, I'm going to take this and put this, we'll put this on later. This. What happens when you loosen these sometimes is the bottom portion is separate and this is happening on both of these. So what it is is if you can see, this is rotating out of the machine. This is actually two pieces. Both of them have done that. I'm going to have to get a proper fitting wrench and hold it here and then loosen the top. So I'm going to put on pause so you're not waiting while I'm doing that. Okay, back again with a wrench. And what we're going to do is hold, you know, the bottom here while we loosen the top. Obviously, you use two wrenches, but I'm just using a crescent for the top. Okay, now that it's loose, I'm going to tighten that bottom so it stays in there. This is the part that we want loose because it slides back and forth here. See? Now we have one that's a little farther back. Same story, it loosened itself up at the wrong spot. This is supposed to be loose. So I'm giving that a little torque. We're going to loosen these up so they're a bit sloppy here. So we can move some of this around. What we want to do is loose what's holding it is this this is underneath here so once we get this thing raised up a little bit then we'll be able to uh, sneak that out uh, let me find the and again I'm, I don't want to take it out I just want to loosen it enough where it's going to raise Oop. danger danger Okay. Now I should be see. Yeah, I'm able to get this up a lot. Poke this down. Just 
Need a tad more. Yep. I think we got it. Okay. Now we got this puppy out. This is the troublemaker. If you'll see, it's uh, the roller in here is easily damaged, and of course, where that easily damaged and that running against your film, it's just gooey, uh, gooey rubber. So we're going to replace it with good rubber. Now, this is the part that a lot of people have trouble with. It's got a screw at the end. And of course you have the threads, so how do you keep from messing up the threads on this? Um, what you're going to want to do is use a set of cutters. Now this is a hardened shaft, and you're not going to cut this off no matter what you do, but there's like a nice little inset right up here where you can put the cutters all the way up. You don't want to mess up any of the threads, so put it in the inset. And you're going to hold it with a lot of pressure. And then, let me see if I have a screwdriver to fit it, or I'll have to go get another one. And what you're going to do is then you'll be able to unscrew the screw. Okay, we got that screw loose. And again, this way you're not messing the threads up. Threads are still good. So we're going to take the screw off feel dangerous with this projector here. Let me move it a little bit forward so I don't end up dropping this thing inside that projector, okay? Okay. I feel better. Okay, so now we have this. We're going to remove this screw. And of course the shroud is loose. So the screw is there. That's part one. We'll put that here. Make sure you don't lose that. There. Then what happens is the whole thing comes off. So what we have is the shaft. We have the old roller. And we have the shroud. So the roller comes out of the, there. We're going to oil the shaft, synthetic oil recommended. Wrong one. Don't put the old one back in. Have a new roller. Basically we're going to put on the shaft, rotate a little bit, let some of that oil touch. And basically, we're going to put it into the shroud. And note where you took it out of the shroud. You want to put it back in the same way. You don't reverse it. The um, I guess I can show this way. The fat part goes on the outside. The fat part goes on the outside. There's two parts to a roller. Fat part, skinny part. Put the fat part out. We're going to put our shaft through there. Then, of course, we've got our screw to put back on. Now, this has an indent here. You can see that. Yeah, see, it's like a, a it fits into this hole. So you don't want to, you want to make sure that it's in there when you tighten it. Don't bend the shroud. Got on the shaft. You can see that it's sort of centered here. I'm turning the shaft into the screw right now. You want to make sure that it's centered. And in order to tighten it, you do the same thing. Use your cutters. Hold on to it. And don't 
poke yourself and give it a nice tightening. Okay, it's good. It's rotating nice on there. So I'm going to put this aside right now. And we're going to address that shaft that's uh, sticky. And we want to make sure that we have that shaft moving nicely. Put it back in. So it's still stiff. You can still feel it's stiff. It's spring loaded and it should, of course, So I'm going to move it up and down. Now see I have a little valley here. I fill the valley with oil. I've had some of these that were so sticky I would just leave this valley of oil overnight, come back the next day and then the shaft is freer, but we're going to do this quicker. I want to, it should it should it's got a, a spring on there, but the spring is not like super not supposed to be. It's not like a super uh, rigid spring. It, it, the pull is 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 mild. So this up and down motion is important to get that to work into the shaft. And I can probably get a little bit deeper into the bottom of the shaft too here. With a little more oil. But you can see that's a lot more looser than it was before. It was extremely stiff. Right now we have this shaft up. It doesn't hurt to oil this shaft too, by the way. When we push all this stuff back. But I think we got this shaft nice and loose. So now is the time to put back our roller. Let me find a nut that's in here. Always put your parts in one bin or something so you know where everything is. Okay. I'll put the nut where I don't drop it, which will be here. I should be able to get this puppy back underneath. Might have to use the nose players to do so. Maybe not. A little awkward, but it gets in there sooner or later. Okay, as you can see, I have this uh, in here now. So what I'm going to do is push some of this mechanism back down again. Because we really don't need it high up anymore. Make sure push everything back down so it runs in the rollers. I mean in the slots. It goes back and forth in a slot with these three screws. I'm just going to tighten this down just a little bit temporarily. We're going to lubricate all this when we're through. Put 
Okay, remember we said we're going to make sure that we align this bottom shroud to the proper height. Let's get that nut on here. What I discovered is if you have this shroud aligned, I guess you can see that. If you have that opening straight across, I should probably try to get in a little closer if possible. Oh yeah. If you have this opening, the smaller opening on the bottom by the way, straight across, it's always perfect. And usually from the factory it's like that. This one is just slightly off. And I'm tightening this nut and I'm keeping this vertical on the this smaller area open on the bottom. Now you don't want the shroud to move but if you notice it's not moving, I've been slightly tightening it. So this screw is already protruding and it's holding on to the shroud. So at this point, give it a little more tightening. Working, oh, by the way, I'm working the knob, the magnetic optical knob right now, which is pretty stiff, so undoubtedly hasn't been used much. Take a look, I wonder if that spring has come loose. This is still going to need more lubrication. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work it without um, the video running and uh, we'll come back and it'll all be loose, okay? Of course the other option is to leave it overnight with that oil bath like I said, but I want to finish this up with you. Okay, it took another uh, minute or so. Uh, I oiled around the bottom of the shaft all the way around. And now as you can see, this is how loose it's supposed to be. When you turn the magnetic optical, well, it's got to be in forward. When you turn the magnetic optical, you see this thing's supposed, this roller is supposed to snap up and it sandwiches the film in there uh, and basically uh, uh, the magnetic track rubs against the uh, uh, the mag head. So you can see that it's nice and loose and we can put it back together. When you put it in forward, I don't know if I should back it up and show you how the mechanism works now. When it's an optical, it's a magnetic, when it's an optical, this doesn't move at all. You know, the little switch. When it's in magnetic, then it goes all the way up and touches. So in optical, it never touches the path. This roller never moves. In magnetic, it goes all the way up and touches the mag head. Okay, now we're going to...
start our reassembly. We want to make sure that uh, we lubricate the, the moving points. This projector had a lot of uh, all the fuzzies all over it, so let me get some of these off. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is lubricate these two pieces here. Since we have them loose, we can just uh, drop a little grease on here. Otherwise, sometimes I use oil. But uh, they rotate back and forth on, on the shaft. Here's where the movement is, so you lubricate these two spots. There's just a tad of grease. Film in there, but you don't want. Mm, the film gets everywhere, doesn't it? Okay. Now we're going to put our two pieces back on. Just make sure nothing is binding when you're putting this stuff back together. Everything should flow freely. Again, you can use the proper wrench, but I'm just using this. Okay. After you tighten anything, make sure that it's still moving. It's moving nicely back and forth. Okay. Now, again, we have to get into here, tighten this Phillips screw, which is the last. Yeah, you can see it right there. Since it's hard to get grease in there, I'm going to drop a couple drops of oil on the part here. Tighten that screw once it's in forward position. Don't forget, you need to put it in forward to do so. I'm tightening it. There. Tightening that screw. And again, forward position, there's a little ridge here, so you get a screwdriver in there. Sort of cool. Can't get it in here if it's in forward. I mean, in, in off. So at this point, we've, oops, we've gotten the mechanism all back together. We still have one roller that's not on, and we need the clips. Always nice to lubricate these shafts. I've seen these where they they they're literally are are so stiff they don't even sort of like jam everything up with, from lack of use, of course. So I'm putting the spring back on. Putting it in the right position. You can always check your work. I'm going to turn the knob, but make sure everything is moving, nothing is binding. We'll get our two C clips. By the way, a note about C clips. Uh, let's see if you could see. C clips have like a nice shiny new, new looking side because they're punched this way. And then the other side, sort of like a little rough. Now you would think that you want it to look pretty and put the nice side out, but really what you want to do is put the rough side out. This way, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly less binding for any operation here of uh, 
the projector. So, my goodness, what did I do with my nose clips, nose pliers? Well, that's why it's always nice to have two sets of nose pliers. I'll find them later. Okay. We got one clip on. As they say, ugly side out. Should have a second one here somewhere. Yep, here it is. And again, we're going to put the ugly side out. it when these clips are loose like this. Um, that happens from being overstretched or something like that. What you can do is slightly squeeze them together with your nose players, not a lot. isn't rotating like freely on there. Same thing goes with, you know, you want to you want to have it a little bit solid. Yeah. You don't want that nose that clip turning when you're working. Okay, so we got mag optical, everything's working. So, basically now all we have to do is button up the uh, the mechanism. Um that would just be putting the covers back on and so on. I don't know if, you know, we've, we've really addressed that in some of our other machine, um, some of our other videos, I think. If not, it's just putting covers back on. Uh, this goes back here, a couple screws, take off the knob. Um, and put the plastic back on. So this is, um, Basically, the uh, replacement of the roller for the uh, magnetic sound. And uh, I think we've covered it uh, at this point. Thanks for watching, and good luck in your repairs.